Dr. Benita Rattan and this channel is dedicated to skincare for skin of colour. As you know, I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of colour. Now with us, we do need to be more careful with our skin um, because any form of irritation or inflammation can trigger our melanocytes and leave us with more hyperpigmentation. Unfortunately, the majority of products on the market tend to focus mainly on how to get the best result, but without worrying too much about how much irritation or inflammation it's gonna cause. With us, we have to be empowered with knowledge. We need to first of all ask the question, is this gonna irritate or inflame our skin? And then the second question should be, am I gonna get the results I want with this particular product? So that slight difference in priorities is the reason why the majority of the products on the market were designed for Caucasian skin. So skin that's unlikely to burn and lead to more pigmentation. So really that's the aim of this whole channel is to empower you. As you know, none of my product, none of my uh, videos have ever been sponsored and they will never be sponsored. This is an unbiased channel for you to know what you should be wearing and what you might potentially avoid. So today's video has been requested quite a lot by you actually and this is the best moisturizers to use with retinol. I feel like retinol is probably one of the most well-known ingredients in skincare. It is one of the most effective forms of vitamin A for anti-aging um, and really the whole vitamin A family is sort of the, the royalty of skincare when it comes to anti-aging. So if this video sounds good to you, please give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. So retinol is a fantastic ingredient. Um, what it does is it increases cell turnover. So cells go from the basal layer where they're manufactured to the surface where you can see them and it increases the rate at which this happens. What it also does is that there can be a reduction of oil being produced as well. So this can contribute to dry skin that happens with retinol. But also this increased cell turnover can, can also dry the skin. Drying the skin equals tends to equal more sensitivity and also flaking. So flaking is something else that we tend to see. It's not an exfoliator. Um, I think this is where there's a bit of confusion, but you can get flaking from retinol and Sometimes I would say when you definitely need to be careful when it comes to retinol full stop. With skin of color, we obviously want to minimize any irritation or inflammation. So if you're getting a bit of dry skin or a bit of sensitivity, that's okay. But if you're getting flaking, then sometimes the flaking can lead to more pigmentation if there's enough irritation taking place. So it really is a fine balance when it comes to retinol. This is one of the reasons that I say, you know, maximum 0.5% retinol for skin of color. Um, and in fact, my favorite form of vitamin A is actually retinaldehyde as opposed to retinol. Um, I do formulate with retinol myself. So for example, in my dark circles kit or bikini pigmentation kit, you will see retinol in it, but maximum 0.5%. And really retinaldehyde is what I want to be using on your skin because it's only one step removed from retinoic acid. So it's far more effective, but with minimal irritation. And that really is key for skin of color. So the most important thing here is to make sure we maintain the barrier function. So the way we do this is by using a moisturizer that has three key actives in it. One are humectants, the second one are ceramides, and the third one is proteins uh, or peptides, um, which is basically a broken down form of protein. Now, what this does is it helps to restore the skin barrier. And if you have a damaged skin barrier, first of all, you shouldn't be wearing retinol at all because don't forget retinol is an alcohol. It's got OL at the end. Um, and so you don't wear an alcohol on already irritated skin. You're just asking for trouble at that point. However, if you have slightly dry skin or slightly... Um, sensitive skin, then you want to be using skin restorers before you then apply retinol, which is obviously 
quite an irritating ingredient. Now my favorite technique when it comes to skin of color and applying moisturizer is the sandwich technique where you apply your moisturizer first, then your retinol, then your moisturizer. If you're using encapsulated retinol, then I'm happy for you to go straight in with your retinol. If you're using a retinol ester like retinol palmitate, I'm happy for you to go straight in with your with the ester. If you're using retinaldehyde, I'm happy for you to go straight in with the retinaldehyde and then moisturize on top. The reason I'm saying with retinol to apply your moisturizer first is that we want to minimize irritation. Always with skin of color, the first question you ask is how do I minimize irritation? Yes, it's gonna mean that you have less retinol penetrating into the skin, but it means that you don't have the side effects that are highly likely to happen with ret retinol that's 1% plus. I, so I wouldn't even recommend 1% for retinol for skin of color. I always say 0.5%, but there's actually very few products with 0.5% retinol in them. So I understand why you would purchase 1% retinol. The other thing you could potentially do is to mix your retinol with your moisturizer in the palm of your hand first, and that will dilute it and then apply it to the face then wait, let it dry, and then apply more moisturizer. The reason I love for you to start with your vitamin A first is because really, to be honest, it's the first product that you put on your skin that's going to have maximum penetration. And, you know, we talk about layering single actives, and I've done lots and lots of videos for you on how to layer the ordinary and how to layer lots of different products. Unfortunately, the more you layer, the less penetration is happening you know, by the third active that you're putting on the skin, you know, you're not getting much penetration because it really needs to go through all the other layers of product first. Um, and this is really why I tend to advocate for cocktail creams to treat multiple problems for skin of color so that we are getting maximum penetration of multiple actives all at once. But, you know, we have to work with what's on the market. And right now the landscape really is predominantly single ingredient actives and so we you know we sort of have to make do and in addition when it comes to choosing fragrance free you know essential oil free or dehydrating alcohol free products there are very few and so or it's you know we've already got a minimal pot that we're working from and then you know it's not ideal and that's why as a formulator um you know i for me, it's all about doing clinical trials and seeing does that product work? And that only happens if you create a cocktail product, a product with multiple actives in it. Anyway, obviously I'm digressing and that's what happens when you're a formulator. <laughs> but the, the point I'm trying to make is out of all of the ingredients that I would choose to put on your skin first is gonna be your vitamin A because that really is the star ingredient. It's almost like everything else is sort of support, a supporting act uh, when it comes to your anti-aging routine. And so the reason you're probably watching this video is for the anti-aging aspect of this ingredient. And that's why this ingredient should go on first. Um, and then you can top up with other actives. Okay, so Dr. B, what are your favorite moisturizers? Get to the point. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> my first, my favorite moisturizers, let's start off with Dove uh, moisturizer derma series the dry skin relief that's going to work really well with your retinol the second product i love is cerave moisturizer i talk about it a lot uh, it tends to come in the tub the only thing i don't like about cerave moisturizer is that ceramides are actually quite unstable so right now for example i'm i'm um, I make a cream for myself, uh, which is a ceramide peptide cream. You know, I don't sell it, it's just for my own face. And I formulated and made it in an airless pump because I know just how unstable ceramides are. And so unfortunately, say for example, when you buy a tub of CeraVe or you buy a tub with ceramides in it and there's air in the product or there's air around the product, how are you supposed to know if the ceramides are still functional? And so that's the only downside I would say with CeraVe. The next product um, I obviously love is Cetraben. So that's just a fantastic emollient. I tend to get quite dry skin, especially as we age. And so this is one of the fattiest creams that I've come across. Um, the other cream I love is Be Minimalist Sepi Calm. This is for all our family in India because they don't really have access to a lot of products that I talk about. Um, and the other product that I love is Aveeno Moisturizing Cream. So these products I'm hoping 
uh, at least you'll be able to get hold of at least one of these products wherever you are in the world. I'm very aware that our skin or color family is global. So I'm hoping that you have access to at least one of these products. If you've got any other questions on retinol, please can you write them down below because I need to know what other videos you want me to make in our retinol series. Um, I think some of you have asked me, can you exfoliate with retinol? I'll make a video on that. Um, some of you have asked me what toners to use with retinol. I'll make a video on that. Um, any other retinol type videos you want me to make, can you write them down below for me just so that I know what to put into our retinol series? Uh, don't forget I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video please do download your free guide for skincare for skin of color the link is down below please do follow me on instagram at the hyperpigmentation clinic and skincare by dr v thank you very much for watching